Yeah. Good morning, children. Uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, cell structure and functions. In that uh, unit, the first chapter is cell, the unit of life. So actually, this part is this lesson is a part of uh, biology, specifically that have been given uh, prescribed in uh, botany syllabus. Okay. So let's okay. directly uh, go into the lesson here. So as all we know that. Uh, there are different types of uh, living organisms. Okay. So in these living organisms, there's a lot of diversity is there. Some are made up of only one cell. Those are called as unicellular organisms. As you all know, the Uh, organisms which have been formed in the earlier part of evolution, those are mostly unicellular organisms. And uh, despite of one cell, that organism will perform all the functions, right? Like it is uh, having independence, existence. So it will exist as an independent organism and it will perform all its activities. So that is uh, all the essential activities or essential functions are performed by that single cell only. So that what we consider that if it is a uh, multicellular organism, there is a division of functions. Like, uh, as we know that multicellular, multicellular organisms means they are made up of uh, many number of cells and uh, some cells will perform one type of function. Some other cells will take up some other type of function like that. There is a division of functions in the multicellular organisms. And as we, when we compare these multicellular organisms with the unicellular organisms, the basic difference is as a unicellular organism is made up of only one cell, that single cell will perform all the functions. Whereas here, there's a division of functions that as we are saying. So depending upon the part in which those cells are present, for example, if we take the plants, so if the cells are present in the root, they will perform some type of function that is absorption and transportation of uh, water and minerals. And if the cells are present in the fruit part, they will help in the storage of the food materials. And if they are present in the leaf, they are performing mainly the photosynthetic function. Likewise, the cells, depending upon their location, the function will be different in the multicellular organism. And irrespective of whether they are unicellular or multicellular, the thing is every living organism is made up of the cells. So that's why we call the cell as a structural unit of life or living organisms and functional unit of life or living organisms. So what do you mean by this uh, structural unit means? That means the structure of a living organism is uh, made up is because of the cell soul. That is without a cell, uh, without the organization, organization of the cell, there is no structure for the living organism. And each and every cell will perform some or other type of function. That's why whenever we are saying that uh, a plant is performing photosynthesis means it is the cells which are present in the plant are performing those functions. That's why we call it as a functional unit of life or living organism also. And uh, here, when we come to, when we come to the discovery related to the cell, so here <clears throat> initially the first scientist, the first scientist who discovered this uh, cell is Anton von Leeuwenhoek. So actually, uh, when the scientists had discovered the cells, they are uh, appear to be like empty spaces, and uh, the name cell the name cell was given by the scientists depending upon the character that is uh, empty spaces are present inside the uh, in, inside those structures which have been discovered by them by the scientists. And of course, later many scientists have been coming into existence. Those uh, they know about. Uh, the living condition of the cells. So be actually before the scientists, there's one more scientist is there. Robert Hooke. This is an actual scientist who discovered uh, that cells which are in the dead conditions are uh, cells without uh, cytoplasm inside them cells without cytoplasm inside them. Whereas the scientist who discovered the living condition of the cells is Anton von Leeuwenhoek. And later, 
there is one more scientist is there his name is called as robert brown he said that uh, the cells are having some spherical shaped structure inside the inside them which are helping in some function and that spherical structure was later named as nucleus so when you consider the discovery related to the cell so the first scientist we had to consider is a robert hook and the next scientist who considered to be discovered the cell in the living condition is a anton von leeuwenhoek and actually uh, what are the uh, cells which have been discovered by the scientist are the bacteria which are uh, prokaryotic and uh, rbcs that is red blood corpuscles which are present in the uh, human beings and uh, the protozoans and the protozoans and uh, here when you consider to the when we come to the point like uh, what are the functions which are performed by the cell means here depend uh, based on that one there is an concept that was coming into existence or uh, proposed by some scientists uh, a botanist and a zoologist that uh, theory is called as a cell theory so there is a botanist called as matthias schleden <clears throat> he studied about different types of uh, uh, organizations which are present inside the plant body that is uh, he studied about different types of cells and tissues which are present in the plant and there is one more scientist is called as schwann he is an uh, british zoologist he studied about the animal cells he said this scientist has studied about the plant cells and this uh, schwann has studied about the animal cells and schwann had also uh, identified the difference between the plant cell and the animal cells so what is the basic difference that he had found between the plant cell and animal cell is this in animal cells the uh, outermost limit structure is an plasma membrane but here in the plant cells there is additional uh, layer is there apart from the plasma membrane that structure is called as a cell wall that means the plant cells have cell wall and also plasma membrane in them whereas uh, animal cells they lack cell wall that is a basic difference that we find between the plant cell and the animal cell and of course the presence of cell wall is a unique character which is present only in the plant cells and uh, based on this uh, discoveries they come to a conclusion that the cells are composed of uh, uh, the li oh, okay the living organisms are uh, made up of cells and their products of the cells so here they are made up of the cells means the structural organization of the living organism is because of the arrangement and organization of the cells only apart from that one the products of the cells means the products of the cells means uh, the whatever the functions which are performed by the organism uh, or the cells which will uh, produce some type of uh, compounds inside them and uh, th those are nothing but the products of the cell which are retained in the cells and of course they are helping in various functions of the plant and also the animals in which they are existing so this is the concept that is called as all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells but there comes a question that from where does the cells have been arised so they could not explain this uh, uh, query that was posed by many other scientists but later there is one more scientist is his name is called as uh, <clears throat> rudolf virchow he said that the new cells will arise from the pre existing cells pre existing means already some cells are present from those cells the new cells will be formed and by which mechanism they are form is they are formed by a process called as division that is the concept of cell division was first uh, proposed by this rudolf virchow only and uh, this was said as omnis cellular e cellular okay here that means the initially these two scientists leiden and swan could not explain from how does the new cells have been arise but rolf wisher had explained that the new cells have been formed from the older cells or the pre existing cells by a process called as cell cell division and uh, the cell theory have been completed by this one that is all cells 
arise from pre existing cells. So, likewise, uh, this is a basic uh, history related to how the cells have been discovered and how the concept related to the cell functions have been come into existence. And of course, here uh, there are uh, uh, there, there initially we said that there are difference between uh, unicellular and multicellular, but at the same time, there are differences between the types of cells also. There are two types of cells are there. Those are called as the <clears throat> prokaryotic cells. and eukaryotic cells. So here, prokaryotic cells are considered to be the primitive ones, whereas these are considered to be little evolved or advanced type of cells. And here, the basic difference between the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells means here they lack <coughs> definite nucleus. So when you come to the structure of nucleus there, we can know what is a definite, definite nucleus means, which contains all the parts of a nucleus, whereas uh, this contains definite nucleus, okay? So here, the uh, other one is, there are special type of proteins are present. Those are called as the histone proteins. So these histone proteins are absent in the prokaryotic cells, whereas these are present in them. And uh, when you come to the flagella structure, in the flagella, there we come to know about the nine plus two arrangement. That is uh, some uh, <coughs> micro microtubules and microfibrils are present, which are uh, organized into nine plus two arrangement. When you come to the flagella part in this lesson, we can know what is that organization. So flagella lack nine plus two arrangement, but here nine plus two arrangement is present. Likewise, these are some basic differences that are present between the uh, prokaryotic cells and the eukaryotic cells. Apart from that one, when you come to the ribosomes, so in the ribosomes, there are two types of ribosomes are there. Those are called a 70S type and 80S type. Whereas in the uh, prokaryotic cells, only 70S type of ribosomes are present. Whereas in the eukaryotic cells, mainly the 80S type are present. And of course, apart from the 80s type, 70s type of ribosomes are also present in some cell organelles like mitochondria and chloroplasts. So likewise, uh, these are some basic differences that we can see between the prokaryotic cells and the eukaryotic cells. And here, uh, if you observe the structure, shape, size, and uh, other properties of the cells, there are a lot of uh, variations uh, uh, depending upon the shape, structure, functions. There's a lot of diversity is there. So most of the cells are microscopic, which we cannot see with our naked eyes. But in order to observe the, some of the cells, the compound microscope is enough. But if you, if you want to observe some of the cells, uh, electron microscope is needed such that uh, there's a lot of diversity in the sizes of the cells. Okay. So here, uh, if we come to the sizes, Mycoplasma are considered to be the smallest one, which are having 0 0.3 micrometers in their size. And whereas some of the bacteria, they are ranging up to 3 to 5 micrometers. And uh, the largest single cell is the ostrich egg. Okay. And... Uh, Whereas in the uh, long, when you consider to be the, uh, <clears throat> in human beings, it is uh, the red blood cells, which are ranging up to seven micrometers in their diameter. Whereas the longest one will be the nerve cell. So likewise, a lot of uh, difference will be there in the sizes of the cells. And of course, they are differing in their shapes also. Some, are, some of them are having polygonal, some of them are having uh, spherical, oval shape, columnar, cuboidal, thread-like, disc shape, irregular. Like where, uh, there's a lot of diversity, in the, diversity is there in their uh, shapes also. Okay. And if you come to the uh, some of the examples, let us take uh, the uh, 
of prokaryotic cells. The typical example that we considered as a prokaryotic cell is the bacteria. And uh, apart from this bacteria, some of them, some of the blue-green algae, mycoplasmas, and uh, PPLO, pleuro-pneumonia-like organisms are there. These are considered to be the representative examples or typical examples of the prokaryotic cells. And uh, typical examples in that one, the first and foremost that we have to consider is the bacteria, which is uh, showing a lot of diversity in their uh, shapes also. That is, some of them are having spherical, rod shape, comma shape, and spirillum or spiral shape will be there. So spherical means spherical, when they are having a spherical shape, we call them as focus. So cocos means like this spherical shape will be there. And if only one cocos is there, we call it as uh, one spherical shape is there, we call it as monococcus. If for two such type of spherical cells are there, we call it as a uh, diplococcus. Likewise, uh, different organizations will be there. Staphylococcus is also there, streptococcus. Staphylococcus means a chain will be there like this. And uh, streptococcus means irregular mass of cells will be there like this. There is no specific arrangement of uh, cells like this. Okay. And the uh, sarcina like cuboidal shape will be there. Whereas if you come to the broad shape, we call them as bacillus. Bacillus means uh, which are having near rectangular or rod like structure. And uh, if it is only one structure, we call it monobacillus. And if they're having two such type of structures, we call it as diplobacillus and the streptobacillus like this, a chain of uh, rod shaped structures will be there. And comma shape, of course, uh, this, the one which are having comma shape are called as a vibrio, like this. Uh, we can say comma like this, no? this type of structure will be there. And spirillum are the one which are having the little folding like structure like this, spirillum. So likewise, there's a lot of diversity in there, uh, uh, in the shapes of prokaryotic cells, the best example in that one is the bacteria. Okay, and uh, let us observe the basic properties that we can see in the bacterial cell or the pro typical prokaryotic cell. <clears throat> we know that uh, in most of the cells, the outermost uh, limit, the outermost limit will be the cell wall, and whereas here uh, in bacteria, apart from the cell wall, apart from the cell wall, they have some additional structure which is present outside the cell wall, we call that structure as the glycocalyx, this one. And the inner one, this is called as a cell wall. That means in bacteria, cell wall is not the outer one, but outside to that one, there's one more structure called as glycocalyx. And inside the cell wall there, we can see the presence of uh, the living membrane. Actually, cell wall is a non-living membrane, as we all know, that uh, inside that one, one more structure is there that is called as plasma membrane. And of course, inside this one, we can see the other structures like uh, we call this as a uh, nucleoid. And uh, cytoplasmic contents are also there. Apart from that one, the 70s type of ribosomes and other organ, 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 uh, component parts are also being present. The glycocalyx, which exists in two forms, if it is in the form of loose sheet, we call it as a slime layer. Whereas if it is in the form of an, a thick and tough, tough part, we call it as a capsule. Okay, cell wall, as we know that uh, it is the one which is a hard rigid structure and which is considered to be the non-living part and uh, providing definite shape to the bacterial cell. And uh, the inside the term plasma membrane is present. This plasma membrane is considered to be the living structure and uh, which is the one which is uh, semi-permeable in its nature. A semi-permeability will be there. And uh, here and there we can so see some type of foldings here. These foldings are, are called as the mesosomes, which are showing inner folding that is folded into the cytoplasmic content. This is a cytoplasm. 
Okay. Then here, lysosomes, uh, different scientists considered various types of functions related to the mesosomes. Some, they say that uh, these are the ones which are helping in increasing in the absorption of uh, area, that is increasing the surface area of absorption. And of course, uh, enzymatic content also. And some, they consider these are the ones which are helping in the formation of cell, formation of cell wall, DNA replication. And of course, not only in the DNA replication, but also helping in the distribution of those uh, replicated DNA to the daughter cells. And some they consider they are helping in the respiration and of course in the secretion also, secretion of different types of materials into the cytoplasmic content. And whereas in the cyanobacteria, as we said that one other typical example of the prokaryotic cells. So those cyanobacteria will have some additional membrane structures. Those uh, additional membrane structures which are present in the cyanobacteria are called as a chromatophores. So what are these chromatophores means? Actually, these are equal to the, are functionally equal to the chloroplasts which are present in the higher plants. And why? Because uh, as we know that um, chloroplast is the one which is uh, having the pigments or photosynthetic pigments, which will help in photosynthesis. Whereas here, the chromatophores are also one which contains the pigments, which will help in the similar type of function. That's why, as I said, that these are functionally equal to the chloroplasts which are present in the higher plants and apart from that one we can see some other structures here that is uh, some uh, structures which are long and uh, elongated flexible structures are present those long elongated structures are called as flagella so this flagella is made up of a uh, protein called as a flagellin protein flagellin protein and this is a one which is helping in the locomotion okay and here this this flagella is having three parts. One is called as a filament, hook, and basal body. So basal body is a part from which this uh, flagella will arise and uh, piercing through the plasma membrane, cell wall, and this uh, glycocalyx, this uh, flagella is uh, coming out. And this flagella, which is coming out, is a flex flexible one, which is called as a filament and which is uh, having an uh, structure inside them that is called as axoneme. Axoneme is a structure which is present inside them. And this axoneme is made up of uh, the microtubular structures. The microtubular structures, that is their organization will be in the uh, nine plus zero form. So as I said that earlier, when differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes was, eukaryotes was discussing, so there I said that nine plus two arrangement is not present. So there here, there we say that peripheral fibrils and the central fibrils will be there. But here only the peripheral fibrils are present. There are no central fibrils. So how many peripheral fibrils are present means nine peripheral fibrils are present. Okay. <clears throat> and apart from that one, so we can see some hard, stiff, stiff and hard, short structures. So these hard, stiff and uh, uh, small structures which are appear to be like small bristles. So these are called as pili or fimbriae we call it as. So what is the basic difference between flagella and pili? Generally flagella are long and flexible whereas pili are short and hard which are bristle like structures and flagella are helping in the locomotion whereas pili or fimbriae are they are helping in attachment of this bacteria to any substratum. For example, if they are present in the water, uh, in, inside the water surface, uh, uh, inside the inside the water, they, they are helping in attachment to any other surface. Or if they are present in the outer environment, if they have to attach to any living organism or to any dead organism, with the help of this flagella, uh, sorry, with the help of this pili only, they are, they are attached. And in pili also, there are special type of pili are present. Those are called as sex pili. So what is the difference between the normal pili that we, that we are discussing earlier to that of the sex pili means? Normal pili are helping in attachment of the bacteria to any host. Whereas sex pili are helping in attachment of one bacteria to the other bacteria. Helping in attachment of one bacteria to other bacteria. So here, what is the purpose of this attachment of one bacteria to other bacteria means generally they, they will perform a uh, reproduction called as conjugation. For that conjugation process, this sex pili are helping, that is they are helping the transfer of 
the genetic material from one bacterial cell to the other bacterial cells uh, through this sex pili. So likewise, these are some uh, basic uh, properties related to this uh, <clears throat> bacteria, the typical example for prokaryotic cells. And apart from that one, one more structure we have to discuss about here that is called as a, the ribosomes. As already we said that they are having only uh, uh, 70th type of ribosomes inside, inside them. And these ribosomes are measuring about 15 nanometers to 20 nanometers in their size. And uh, they are having two subunits that we will be discussing in the uh, actual ribosomes structure, uh, ribosomes uh, subpart. Okay. And apart from that one, these are having some inclusion bodies. So what are these inclusion bodies means inside the cytoplasm of this bacteria, they are, they are having some uh, spherical shape of structures, which are helping in storage of food materials. Okay. So storage of reserve food materials. So what type of food materials they are storing and depending upon the, upon the type of food materials they are storing, they are having, they may be in the form of phosphate granules, cyanophysin granules, and glycogen granules. So apart from this one, they're having some other type of uh, uh, empty spaces or uh, gas storing structures are present. Those are called as a gas vacuoles. So gas vacuoles are the one which will, uh, which are present mostly in the blue-green algae and purple-green photosynthetic bacteria. So here, what is the function of this one is, these are helping in the buoyancy. Buoyancy means the floating ability, floating on the water surface. So actually these are, uh, these are not the one which are helping in storage, but storage of food meters, but they are helping the storage of some gases. So these gases which are stored inside them, they are make the bacteria to be uh, weightless and helping in the floating process. Okay. And let us come to the eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells are considered to be the, the advanced one which are having all types of cell organs, including uh, the nucleus, the definite nucleus, uh, double membrane cell organs like endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, uh, <clears throat> all the structures along with the ATS type of ribosomes and the different types of uh, uh, functional related cell organs are present. And, it, and which type of organs are considered to be the one which are the, having eukaryotic cells means the protistans. Protista, plants, animals, and fungi. These are the ones which are uh, having the eukaryotic cells. And these are having the highly advanced type of uh, nature and advanced type of functions uh, related to uh, uh, when we compare with that of the prokaryotic cells. Okay. And here eukaryotic, uh, typical eukaryotic cell, if you see, so uh, we consider only the plant uh, eukaryotic cell. So in this plant cell, the basic uh, uh, division is, the plant cell is divided into Two parts. One is called as a cell wall. And protoplast. So in this protoplast, once again, <clears throat> it is surrounded by plasma membrane. And inside the plasma membrane, whatever the fluid content and the cell or cell uh, components of inclusions. So that part is called as a protoplasm. And protoplasm is further divided into cytoplasm and nucleus. And what is there inside the cytoplasm means? The cytoplasm is the one which contains all the fluid content. The fluid content means the water along with the all types of cell organelles and of course it uh, including organic and inorganic components like organic components means uh, carbohydrates uh, different types of biomolecules we can consider with different types of 
biomolecules. That is carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, uh, sugars, uh, all, all they are present here. Inorganic means which are in the form of ionic, uh, which are in the form of ions. That is uh, uh, sodium, uh, sodium, ion, sodium ion, uh, <clears throat> magnesium ion, zinc ion, like that. So all those are included in the cytoplasm along with the water. And of course, the so water uh, occupies a major portion. Okay, major content is occupied by the water and organic components will be less and uh, inorganic components are very less in their composition. Okay, likewise, this is a basic uh, division of uh, the plant cell. And let us start with uh, the cell wall here. As we have said that cell wall is absent in the animal cell, it is present only in the plant cell. It is outermost limiting part of plant cell. And of course, this is dead or we can consider it as a non-living, non-living part. And it is hard, rigid, and provide definite shape to the cell. Whatever the shape that is acquired by, by the cell, like we said that there's a lot of variation in the uh, shape of the cells, right? If the cell is having spherical, columnar, uh, <clears throat> oval shape, whatever the shape that is acquired, that is because of the cell wall only. And cell wall is... Uh, uh, permeable to all types of materials. It does as it is a non-living one, it, it cannot select which one to be allowed and which one is not to be allowed. That's why it is permeable to all types of substances. And this cell wall is uh, basically uh, divided into different uh, strata or layers we can consider. Like if, let us take the example of two cells which are present side by side here, right? And uh, here, uh, as I said, that different strata are present, but uh, the scientists had uh, divided them into three layers. So three layers are present in the cell wall. So those are called as middle lamellum or middle lamella, we can call it, okay? Second one is called as primary, uh, primary cell wall and third one is called as a secondary cell wall. Primary cell wall and secondary cell wall. So actually, when does the cell wall is forming? Cell wall is formed during the cell division. Formed during the cell division. And the formation of cell division will be from outside to inside. That is from outside to inside it is formed. So like this in, the, in this direction. That is... Uh, <clears throat> okay. So here, the first formal one is the middle lamellum, which is made up of calcium and magnesium pectates. So it is having both organic and inorganic compounds. The organic compounds are the pectate, pectin, whereas the calcium and magnesium are the inorgan inorganic compounds. And it is the one which is present, it is considered to be the uh, <clears throat> uh, one which is dividing the two cells. Okay, And this mid middle lamellum will be as a, act like a glue-like structure. Why we are calling that it is acting as glue-like structure means it is the one which is uh, uh, binding the two adjacent cells. As it is binding the two adjacent cells, it, it is considered to be the a cementing like structure we can call. Cementing like structure which is binding the two adjacent, uh, two adjacent cells. And this is considered to be the first formed, uh, first layer of cell wall we can say first layer of cell wall. And uh, here middle lamell is, is formed from the depositions of the uh, vacuoles of Golgi complex. Okay, And uh, after the formation of middle lamellum, one more layer will be formed like this. So this, mid, this other layer which is formed here, it is called as a primary cell wall. So this is considered to be the second layer of cell wall. And here the, the composition of this primary cell wall is cellulose, hemicellulose,
pectins and proteins but when we observe the composition of the primary cell wall in algae algae here it is made up of mainly cellulose galactons mannans and of course different types of minerals like calcium carbonate and other type of materials the <clears throat> this is a one which is uh, having elastic nature and here if you could observe this, this is the middle lamellum right and uh, inside uh, inside to the middle lamellum the primary cell wall is formed for this cell and of course when you consider the opposite cell this is a primary cell wall okay and here this primary cell wall leaves some empty gaps so the gaps which are left by the primary cell wall these gaps are there no these gaps are called as a uh, primary pit fields primary pit fields so what is the significance of this primary pit fields means through this uh, empty space only the cytoplasmic content will be moving from one cell to its adjacent cell so here when the cytoplasmic content along with this gap so we call that those type that those type of connections as as plasmodesmatic connections or plasmodesmata we can call plasmodesmata is nothing but the gap between the two cells and through the gap whatever the living cytoplasmic content or materials which are moving from one cell to other cell so that entire structure is commonly called as a plasmodesmata or plasmodesmatic connections which are helping in intercellular transportation intercellular means between the cells the transportation of materials which are taking place between the cells and the oldest uh, okay the youngest one is a primary cell wall so the <clears throat> the last formed one we can say the last formed layer of the secondary cell wall and this secondary cell wall is uh, the concept to be the as we said that the hardness rigidity is there for the cell wall no that property is because of the uh, secondary cell wall only okay and this is deposited towards inner side of the primary cell wall so this is primary cell wall we said no inside to this primary cell wall the second cell wall will be deposited okay and one more thing uh, uh, the primary cell wall is uh, seen in the cells like <clears throat> parenchyma as we as we know about this type of cells and the colon chyma type of cells that is uh, the young cells young cells will show this type of primary cell wall whereas when a become when a cell become matured or older in those mature cells the second cell wall uh, formation will start so this can be seen in some cells like sclerenchyma and here uh, this is made up of lignin suberin and pectin like materials okay this type of uh, uh, compositional variation can be seen in the cell wall and uh, this in this uh, secondary cell wall also some uh, empty spaces are present if you see this one so the empty space are present in the part of secondary cell wall also so these are called as a pits so there are two types of pits are there those are called as simple pits and bordered pits so which are also helping in the transportation of the materials from one cell to the other cell and here <clears throat> the functions of the cell which are the functions of the cell wall which are which is permeable and we say that uh, they are helping in the uh, transportation also okay so which type of transportation they are helping in they are helping in passive transport that is the transport which is taking place without the ut without utilization of energy and sometimes they are they are helping in the active transport also that is the transport which is taking place by utilizing energy and sometimes they are helping in the simple diffusion so simple diffusion means the movement of uh, materials from high concentration region to the low concentration region and of course they are helping in the osmotic movement also so osmotic movement means the uh, movement of water the movement of water from uh, high water potential region to the 
low water potential region. So here, uh, when osmosis is taking place, uh, it is taking place uh, with, the, with the help of an, uh, carrier proteins. Inside the cell wall, there are special type of membrane proteins are there. Uh, we can call them with, as they are present in the membrane, they are, we are calling them as membrane proteins and they're helping in the transportation or carrying of materials from one cell to other cell. That's why we are calling them as a carrier proteins. So with the help of the carrier proteins, uh, the osmosis will be taking place. Okay, here, uh, <coughs> the, in the active transport, we said that with the, with the utilization of energy, it is taking place by, uh, in which form they are utilizing energy means in the form of adenosine triphosphate, that is ATP. Okay, so the best example uh, is a sodium or potassium pump, which is uh, taking place in the plants. So likewise, uh, all these are the different types of transportation which are taking place with the help of the, uh, which is taking place from one cell to the other cell. And inside the cell wall, generally we, uh, we know that uh, a living membrane is there, no? That living membrane, we call it as the plasma membrane. This plasma membrane is uh, uh, considered to be one which is having semi-permeability or selective permeability there. So wh what is the difference, between, what is the basic difference between the uh, property of uh, functions of plasma membrane and the cell, cell membrane, cell wall means in cell wall, it is allowing all types of materials that is completely permeable, whereas it is uh, selecting the substances which are to be allowed inside. So that is taking place with the help of this uh, carrier proteins. And of course, all these functions are concerned with the plasma membrane only. Okay, here in this, uh, apart from this plas apart from the semi permeable property, they are also helping in the cell growth, that is, in the increase in the size of the cells. And of course, they are helping in the inter, inter they are forming the intercellular junctions. Intercellular junctions. And of course, they are helping in the secretion of different types of materials and uh, cell division. endocytosis that is taking inside cyto cyto means cell and take means taking that is taking off materials into the cell and uh, here there are the different uh, there are different types of uh, scientists are there they are the studied about uh, the structure and uh, uh, properties of the plasma membrane or this is otherwise called a cell membrane also or plasma lemma and here, this is uh, basic, uh, basically made up of lipids and proteins. So uh, lipids, they have uh, <clears throat> phosphate in them. That's why we call them as phospholipids, right? So phospholipids are, uh, and of course, proteins are of two types. Those are called extrinsic proteins and intrinsic proteins are there. extrinsic and intrinsic proteins are there. So extrinsic are the ones which are visible from outside, intrinsic are the ones which are embedded inside the structure. And apart from that one, apart from this uh, uh, one, they're ha also having some other type of organic materials that is cholesterol is present, okay? And if you observe the lipid, lipid layer, so they're having the polar head, which is uh, visible, uh, which is exposed to outside and uh, they are having hydrophobic tail. So if you observe the structure, so it will be like this. So this is a polar head of the phospholipid and this is a hydrophobic tail of the phospholipid. And here, this polar head, <clears throat> this polar head is the one which is uh, uh, seen towards, the, which is present uh, towards the outer side. Okay, with the embedded part will be the hydrophobic tail. Okay, and here, apart from this one, the pause, uh, apart from this one, uh, different types of other organic components are also been there inside that one, inside this uh, plasma membrane. And the compositional variation will be there between the lipids and proteins. So there's an, uh, it is not specific that the percentage of lipids will be uh, stable. So it may be, it may be different in different types of cell organelles. So if you take the erythrocytes, the protein percentage will be 52 
whereas uh, lipids percentage will be 40. But it is not the same for all types of uh, uh, living cells. Okay, And there are many scientists are there who try to explain the organization of this plasma membrane, that is organization of the lipids and proteins. So in which uh, the first one is the uh, fluid mosaic model. which was proposed by Singer and Nicholson. So in this fluid, in this fluid mosaic model, so the <coughs> lipid part is like a fluid and uh, the proteins are organized in the form of a mosaic pattern. And actually, uh, many models have been proposed, but out of them, this is considered to be the most successful one or uh, the most established type of model. Why? Because this is a model which is exploring, which is able to explain the selective permeable property or the semi permeable property of the plasma membrane. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, one more model is there sandwich model. and uh, unit membrane model. Of course, these are the ones which are uh, proposed by some other scientists, but these two models could not explain this property of the plasma membrane. And of course, here the plasma membrane, as we said that it is helping in transportation of materials uh, through the junction-like structure. That's why intercellular junctions are forming and they are helping the cell growth, secretion, cell division, and uh, endocytosis also, okay? <clears throat> plasma membrane is considered to be the living and semi-permeable membrane, which is considered to be the second part below the cell wall in the animal, in the plant cells, whereas in the animal cells, animal cells it is the outermost part. It is the outermost part. And if you come to the other parts, which are uh, the cell organs, which are present in this, in the cell. So let us start with the first one, endoplasmic, Reticulum. So the uh, endoplasmic reticulum is the one <clears throat> which is uh, connected from the plasma membrane to the nuclear membrane. Consider this is a cell, this is plasma membrane, and this is a nucleus. So this is a nuclear membrane. So connected from this nuclear membrane to the plasma membrane like this. Like this, it is connected. Okay, this structure is called as the endoplasmic reticulum, connecting between the nuclear membrane to the plasma membrane. And this endoplasmic reticulum is having uh, outer outer structure and inner structure. So outer part is called as extra luminal, whereas inner part is called as a luminal part. Luminal and the extra luminal part will be there. And here, endoplasmic reticulum will exist in two forms. One one is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So actually in uh, <coughs> eukaryotic cells, some in some places the ribosomes will come and, come and attach to this uh, endoplasmic reticulum and such that these are uh, appears to be like a granular structures then and, uh, and uh, ribosomes are considered to be the granular structures and that's why we can call it as a granular endoplasmic reticulum also. And uh, whenever the granules or ribosomes are attached, so it appears to be rough in its texture. That's why we call it as a rough endoplasmic reticulum. And which type of ribosomes are attached means only YTS type of ribosomes are attached to this surface. Why? Because in the cytoplasm of the prokaryotic, sorry, in the cytoplasm of the eukaryotic cells, only 80 type of ribosomes are present. Whereas if you see this other, other surface where the ribosomes are not attached. So that's why we call it as a granular endoplasmic reticulum and the surface is smooth. That's why we call it a smooth endoplasmic reticulum also. Okay. So here, basically, uh, what is the function of uh, endoplasmic reticulum means it is helping in intracellular transportation. So intracellular transportation means it will transport the materials from 
one part of the cell to the other part of the cell. So from, from one part of the cell, this, this part to this part, this part to this part, like this, it is forming, uh, it is helping intracellular transportation. And here, uh, apart from that one, they are also helping in secretion of various types of substances also, particularly the granular or rough endoplasmic reticulum will help in the protein synthesis. Why they are concerned with the protein synthesis means actually the ribosomes which are attached to this endoplasmic reticulum are concerned with the protein synthesis. So as they are attached to this stuff, uh, to the endoplasmic reticulum, that part of the endoplasmic reticulum is also concerned with the protein synthesis. Whereas smooth are helping in the synthesis of lipids and particularly in the animals, they are helping in the secretion of steroidal hormones. Secretion of the steroidal hormones. Lipids like steroidal hormones are secreted in the plant, in the animal cells. So endoplasmic reticulum is the one which is helping in the formation of Golgi complex and lysosomes. That is Golgi complex and lysosomes will arise from the endoplasmic reticulum only. And what is the composition from by which type of materials this endoplasmic reticulum is made up of means this endoplasmic reticulum is made up of uh, lipids and proteins. And this endoplasmic reticulum is present only in the eukaryotic cells. That means it is absent in prokaryotic cells. Okay. So likewise, uh, these are the properties and functional aspects related to endoplasmic reticulum. Then coming to the next one, Golgi complex. As already, I said that Golgi complex is a structure which is formed from endoplasmic reticulum. This was observed by Camillo Golgi, Camillo Golgi a scientist, and it is uh, either a flat disc or uh, cistern type of structures and each unit of a Golgi complex each unit of Golgi complex is called as dictyosome. Dictyosome. And this dictyosome contains different parts. So if you observe the structure of this one, it is uh, having convex, convex structure, uh, structure uh, convex side and the concave side like this. So this is appears to be like a convex surface. So convex surface is otherwise called as a fish site or formation site. That means this is a site which is towards the endoplasmic reticulum and this is considered to be the concave site or trans or maturation site. That is uh, the formation of endogalgic complex will take place from this side and maturation will be taking place on this side. Whenever it is getting matured, so it is start for forming the vesicles and the vacuoles like this. So basically, uh, if you observe the structure of Golgi complex, we can see the, uh, three types of structures. Uh, those uh, actually, we can say uh, four types of structures also. Those are called as uh, cisterne, tubules, vesicles and vacuoles. Uh, cisternae are the one which are uh, uh, these, these structures. Whereas tubules are the one which are having branched like this. Branch structures, if they have like this, these are called as a tubular structures. Vesicles are this one, which are uh, nearly forming some spherical like structures, which are having granular organization inside them. And vacuoles are the one which have been separated from this uh, Golgi complex. And whenever the vacuoles are separated, they are helping the formation of lysosomes. Okay. And uh, the number of dictyosomes, the each unit of Golgi complex, as we said, no, the number of dictyosomes will be uh, differing from one type of oxygen uh, to other type of cell. Their number is ranging from 1 to 25,000. The highest number is ranging up to 25,000 per cell, which is present in the rhizoidal cell of Cara. 
So Kara is a algal member. Okay. And here, generally, what is the number of dictyosomes which are present in each cell of plant means generally the number is ranging from 10 to 20 per plant cell. 20, 20, 10 to 20 is the normal number of uh, cells, the normal number of dictyosomes in each cell. Okay. Then, then uh, when you come to the functions of this one, they are mainly helping in packaging. So what is pack, what is uh, what is packed on uh, uh, what this type of material is packed in that money is they are helping the packaging of uh, different types of materials uh, that have been secreted by other uh, which have been secreted or particularly the enzymes we can consider okay and secretions also whatever the materials that have been secreted whatever the enzymes hormones that have been secreted they have been packed and uh, transported through to other parts of the cell and here. They are packed in the form of vesicles. So whatever the vesicles that, as I said, that they are having some granular structures, no? So the vesicles are the ones which are storing those uh, materials and they get separated from this uh, cistern and they are converted into vacuoles and transported to different parts of the cells. Generally, on which side the packing is taking place means, generally on which side the vacuole formation will be there means, on the maturation side. On the maturation side is taking place. Okay. And uh, apart from that one, they are helping in secretion secretion of which materials means secretion of hormones secretion of uh, complex carbohydrates and they are helping in fat transportation and of course they are helping in the synthesis of pigments also and already I said they are helping the formation of lysosomes. And uh, apart from that one, they are also helping the formation of uh, cell wall. That is during cell division, uh, cell wall formation, particularly uh, the calcium and magnesium pectates, or particularly the middle lamellum part of the cell wall is formed by this one. So these are different types of functions related to this uh, Golgi complex. Then coming to the Lysosomes. Lysosomes are the are discovered by Christian D. Duve scientist. And these are spherical shaped structures. So, okay, before going to lysosomes, one more part related to Golgi complexes. These are present only in eukaryotic cells. That is, they are absent in the prokaryotes. Okay. And uh, lysosomes are spherical shaped structures they, and they are having hydrolytic enzymes. So from where does these hydrolytic enzymes are uh, uh, produced means these, are, these hydrolytic enzymes are produced from the endoplasmic reticulum because these are formed both from endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi complex. So both endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi complex, both of them are helping the formation of the lysosomes. And they are rich in different types of uh, uh, hydrolytic enzymes. So different types of hydro, uh, we can call them hydrolases also. The different types of hydrolases or hydrolytic enzymes are lipases, proteases, carbohydrases, nucleases, peptidases, acid phosphatases. sulfatases. Likewise, these are different types of uh, enzymes which are present in them. And uh, all these enzymes are active at uh, acidic pH. All these enzymes are active at acidic pH. That is the pH ranging between 4 to 5. Okay, they, these are considered to be the polymorphic cell organelles. Why these are called as polymorphic cell organelles means because they exist in different forms. And what are those different forms means? They exist in three forms, particularly those are primary lysosomes, secondary lysosomes, and tertiary lysosomes. So primary lysosomes are the ones which are having a single, mem okay, uh, single lipoprotein membrane surrounded by a single lipoprotein membrane along with the hydrolytic enzymes. But when an uh, 
micro organism uh, micro micro organism or any food particle enters into the primary lysosomes then it is considered to be the secondary lysosomes and this is a part which start digesting the the food particles the uh, the material which is coming into the input into it okay and generally uh, the undigested material will be formed start forming in the secondary lysosomes and what is the tertiary lysosome means which the, when the complete digestion is taking place when the when the digestion is completed so the complete undigested material will be retained in this one okay and these secondary lysosomes are uh, known as known with uh, some other name those are heterophagous are heterophagosomes Okay. Whereas tertiary lysosomes are called as a uh, re residual bodies. Why these are called as residual bodies means uh, they will store all types of unwanted or undigested metal inside them. And of course, uh, there's one more uh, concept that is uh, known regarding this uh, lysosomes is autophagic vacuoles. And uh, of course, these are called as suicidal bags also. Why they are called as suicidal bags means Generally, these lysosomes which are present inside the cell, what they will do means during starvation, they will release all hydrolytic enzymes uh, into the cell and start digesting the components of the cell, leading to death of the cell. That's why these are called as a <coughs> suicidal bags of the cell. So likewise, this is the uh, basic properties and the functional aspects related to the lysosomes. Okay, uh, let us continue the uh, next. Uh, part of other part of or uh, other aspects related to the uh, cell cell biology in the next class